Hello, it's your friendly neighborhood host, J.T. Wheatley, back for another episode of the History Comics Podcast, this time with the life of Alfonso Green. History has a habit of losing many people to the cracks, and it's only the memories of others that they are remembered. One example is Alfonso Green, who was a high school classmate of the legendary Alex Toff, and who was able to recount Green as a promising artist who sadly made personal choices that hampered what was potentially a brilliant art career. Alfonso Green was born in Cleveland, Ohio, December 6, 1927. He was the son of Alfonso and Melanie Warren Green, who had moved to Ohio from the South, he from South Carolina, and her from Alabama. During the Depression, the family later would move to Harlem in New York City. Alfonso Green attended the prestigious High School of Industrial Art, where he was a classmate with Alex Toff, both who expressed a great desire to become comic book artists. Toff would, of course, become a legendary one in the 1960s and 70s, including working in animation, but due to Green's race and personal choices, his path wasn't so sure. Green would get his work, first work while still a student, working for Shelley Mayer, the legendary future editor at DC. Green started out doing a backup feature for the Black Pirate comic in 1944-1946. Next, he did Wonder Woman of History, a backup feature in the Wonder Woman comic that highlighted the lives of remarkable real women in history. Green's feature was on Sojourner Truth, the former slave and turned abolitionist and civil rights icon, appearing in Wonder Woman number 13 in the summer of 1945. This is notable as it will be the first comic book story about and by a black person. Unfortunately, Green's personal life interfered with his promising comic book career. He was knifed in a gang fight and later sent to prison because of it. Alex Hoff claimed that Eleanor Roosevelt herself testified on Green's behalf, but there was no corroboration that could be discovered. It is true that she was on the board of several charitable causes and was one of Fawcett Comics editorial on the editorial advisory board. Several years later, Green would do heroic comics for Easter Color Printing in 1949, but later had to serve five and a half years for robbery at the age of 22. The crime could have come out of the comic books at the time, as Green and his three partners thought they could put a lemon in their robber's mouth when gagging him, believing if the gag came loose, the puckering caused by the lemon would keep the victim from screaming. After his release, Green worked for Timely Atlas, the future Marvel, under editor Stan Lee in 1956-1957, and appeared to finally want to go straight, as he turned in 16 different jobs to Lee. Unfortunately, this was a time when Atlas imploded, losing its distributor and nearly going out of business. Thankfully, National Publications slash DC actually came in to save the dim, but as part of the deal of distributing Atlas's books, they were limited to only eight a month, thus many artists, including Green, had to be let go due to the reduced workload. His last work for a company appeared in Strange Tales number 66 in December of 1958, which he had completed back in 1957. Green later did Classics Illustrated World Around Us number 2 in October of 1958, which would be the end of a promising art career despite his personal setbacks. Sadly, this may have led to a return to crime, as the New York Times article dated on January 1st, 1964, showed four men, one of whom was Alfonso Green, arrested for suspicion of kidnapping, having been caught with four guns and a bottle of ether outside the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in Manhattan. The judge, the judge would later dismiss the charges due to lack of evidence, though. Alfonso Green died in October of 1977 with only the memory of the great Alex Toff to fill in what could have been a brilliant art career. It is sad that, but, but a, it is a sad but brief story of a promising artist who was hampered by his criminal choices, but thankfully we have his work to remember him by. I would like to thank the chief source for this episode, Invisible Men, the trailblazing black artist of the golden age of comic books by King Quattro, which features a great biography of Alfonso Green and other great black artists. A must read for any comic book fan. My name is Mark McCray, and I'm the author of The Best Saturdays of Our Lives. I'm Dan Klink, co-host of The Best Saturdays of Our Lives podcast. The Best Saturdays of Our Lives features programming trends from the 1966 television season all the way through the last hurrah of the early digital age of the 1990s. On the show, if it's animated, we talk about it. Order your signed copy today at tbsool.com. And listen to the podcast at esonetwork.com and all podcast platforms. Now it is um, May 27th, 2021. Time for the favorite comic book of the week. 
Batman Fortnite Zero Point Number Two by Chris Goff Gage and Riley Brown, which is a pr- surprisingly fun and in-depth comic. That yes, as the as described by the title, Batman has found himself sucked into the world of the video game Fortnite, and he's there with no memory, doesn't know how he's got there, and especially his also memento style because every 22 minutes his memory is erased. He has to go by the clues he leaves behind from the previous time to figure out what's going on. And in this issue, he sees some familiar faces, or at least he believes familiar, from uh, his from his original home in Gotham City, as he tr- keeps trying to find a way to get out of this Fortnite world, or, or at least trying to figure out what's going on. Christoph Gage takes this concept and runs with it. It's like, it just should, this should be like a joke gimmicky concept, but he actually makes a really good story that delves into Batman's character, his relationship with the characters in it, and so forth. It makes a really great Batman read, and Riley Brown's art is great. It has a nice grittiness, but also the, the, the pencils really match the graphics of the Fortnite world as well, so it really blends together very well. And apparently uh, one of the Fortnite's uh, uh, game developers uh, was a consultant on the story as well, because this thing works great. It's... It's really, I've heard from many people saying how surprising this is, how good this uh, comic book is when you think, yeah, oh, a Batman goes into Fortnite, how crazy is that? But no, this is really good, it's really well written, and if you're a Fortnite fan or a Batman fan, definitely check this uh, book out. I mean, it surprised me as much as uh, everyone else so far, but yeah, probably, quite frankly, it might be one of the best Batman books in the stands right now, that's how good it is. But yes, uh, Batman Fortnite Zero Point, uh, issue number two. That's my favorite comic of the week. And with that, we'll conclude this another edition of a, um, a famous uh, black artist of the Golden Age of Comic Books. Now join me again next week for another biography. And until then, go out and enjoy yourself a good comic book. <laughs>